Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And today we're going to be talking to my spirit guides. Ta-da! You can't see them, but I can. But they're right here and they're ready to answer your questions. So thank you so much for sending in your political questions. We're going to dive right in because you guys know I like to get down to business, right? We're going to start off with Madrid, Madrid. And Madrid, Madrid has a very interesting question because frankly, I tell you guys, I am channeling these videos and this is going to prove it to you. Your question is any new news on the fantastic story on Jack Smith and Martin Meadows. What a story. So what she's talking about, or he or Madrid Madrid is talking about, is that my last political question uh, Q&A that I did before I went on my little holiday break, I channeled this whole thing where I, I saw this kind of breakdown of what was going to happen to Meadows. And how Mark Meadows was trying, he had the the 10 inch binder. Do I need to get out my ruler? Anyway, the 10 inch binder, we all know what 10 inches is, right? So he had this binder and he was going to give it to potentially the Russians. Someone trips him, he falls. Jack Smith was in on it all the time. Perhaps even Meadows was in on it all the time. But my point is, is that you guys started asking questions. As soon as the video dropped, you guys started putting comments. What's the end? We, we don't leave us hanging. The worst part too. And I remember reading your comments and going, what are they talking about? What leaving you hanging? What did I say? I swear to you guys, I had no idea what you were talking about. And I was getting ready for this trip. Lots of things were going down and I just forgot about it. So now here we are again, you guys are asking again, don't forget about the ending of the Mark Meadows thing, because I don't like cliffhangers myself personally, so it's surprising that I would do one. So I didn't remember what I said. This happens a lot. You guys comment things and I'm like, what are they talking about? <laughs> so Because I don't remember what I told you because I'm channeling. So the bottom line is this, when, when I'm going into Mark Meadows, energy, <clears throat> he's a... Um, they just called him a Fed. So he's obviously working with the Feds. He's a complicit, complacent, come something, come a complicit. I, I believe the word is complicit. He's complicit. Complicit in what? Complicit in the uh, takedown. He's complicit in the takedown. He's part of, he's one of the, uh, how would you say it? You would say it like a bait. Like if you put out bait for something, he's basically bait, uh, for some things to happen. And I believe a lot of these things have already happened or else I wouldn't tell you that. I'm, I obviously don't want to be in the business of telling you things that, uh, would be bad for justice or bad for the, or anybody for that matter, for justice, whatever country you're from, the guides will literally, when I go to publish this, they will tell me to wait. It's the worst thing I could ever hear because when I'm channeling, sometimes I, I'm just channeling the energy as well. So sometimes I'm on my own, so to speak, going down the rabbit hole by myself because I'm riding the energy. That's not the guides. The guides are not telling me, Susan, this is what's going to happen. I ride the energy like a magic carpet ride. And, you know, sometimes I go under the velvet ropes. <laughs> and so I get information I shouldn't get. And then they, I have to go back through and find the information in the video and edit it out. So it's very frustrating for me. I don't want to do that. So I think that this is known. I think this is already uh, his cover has already been blown is what I heard. So they already know that Mark Meadows is a mark, is a is a mark, you know what I mean? He's a he's being used as bait, whatever you want to call that. Uh, this has already been done. And I am seeing some things that I am not going to say. Uh, but yeah, there's other countries involved. This could get messy internationally. This could get messy. The guides are reminding me that we you remember when I talked to you guys a couple of videos ago about I said DeSantis had. I know this all makes sense. Just go with me on this. I know I just went to DeSantis out of Mark Meadows, but listen, this is what happens when I'm channeling. It's like, I am not my own keeper at the moment. I mentioned that DeSantis had an aide, a paid employee who was a from a different country. Okay, now, so there's the FARA Act, F-A-R-A-H, I think, not FARA Fawcett, FARA, Foreign Agent, blah, 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 Act, that 
listen, if you're a United States, uh, any sort of public official, you need to acknowledge and fill out all the forms to say one of my employees is from a different country. This is all documented. This is these are laws. And DeSantis was like, oh, is he from a different country? Oh, I didn't know that. You know, like trying to pretend like he didn't know. And the government's like, you knew and you're going to document this and then we're going to see what happens next. Now, why is that important? Why does that have anything to do with Mark Meadows? You might be asking because Susan's asking the same thing. So the question, the answer is, is that this is going to get internationally messy. And this makes sense because right now today, there have been reports that Trump, this is by the Democrats allegedly, have, are reporting that Trump took millions of dollars from China, from Saudi Arabia, from all these different countries. That's internationally messy, you guys. Also, this thing with Meadows is internationally messy because another country tried to buy this binder. That's internationally messy. So now, and, and, and the guides told you this a while back. They said, uh, this was maybe months ago, that they said, Jack Smith isn't going to stop at the international dateline or the even the international border. He's not going to stop at the United States border. He's not even going to stop at the international water border. He He's going to go wherever the evidence takes him. He's on his magic carpet ride too, ducking under the velvet ropes, right? He's going to go to those countries and he's going to expose this grift. He's going to expose the underbelly of the payments of the grift, you know, the um, compromat. He's going to expose this. Now, when I've been talking about this in the last couple of years, I knew this was the case and I wasn't sure. And there's videos that I'm telling you, I'm not sure that the United States has the wherewithal, the guts, the fire in the belly, whatever you want to call it, to go after another country. Because now we're talking about well, we're talking about ambassadors being pulled. We're talking about a cold cold war. We're talking about, you know, problems, international intrigue, international problems. And don't we have enough problems in our own country <laughs> to deal with? But you know what? It turns out that, yes, Jack Smith is going there. He is going there. He, I, th I feel that he got the approval from the higher ups to say, you do you, boo. Go where you are going to go. We're going to let you do this investigation. We're not going to put any constraints on you. We're going to let you do you. And this is why this is important with Meadows, because it's international intrigue. It's it's not just one. The thing, the message, if I could just clarify everything they've said into one sentence, I would say that what they're trying to say in a very long-winded way is that this international intrigue isn't just a one-off. It's not just DeSantis with his aide. It's not just Meadows. It's not just um, whatever the guy, the Democratic guy that's connected to Egypt. It's not just Trump getting money from these other countries. And it's not just Russia trying to jack up our elections. That's five different things. It's going to be an entire watershed of information. And it's going to change the international kind of world order that the United States and our allies interact with. That's a big statement. I hope you understand the brevity of that statement. We're talking about people that maybe weren't, or countries that maybe weren't allies, but were certainly trading partners we, we certainly had trade deals with them. We at least believed that we could have some sort of relationship with them. These relationships are really going to get tested by this international intrigue. And I really feel like that's going to be the bigger stage. That's going to be the bigger thing that we're going to be hearing about as we go into summer is international intrigue. One after another, after another country, after country, after country, that's going to loop back around to senators. It's going to loop back around to representatives. It's going to loop back around to governors, to even mayors. A lot of people are going to have their hands in the international cookie jar and they are going to be found out and they're going to be dealt with. This is not acceptable. This is against the law. They will be held 
to account because Jack Smith says so. Nobody gets a pass. When I say nobody gets a pass, then they show me, oh, that person got a pass. Wait, that, that person over there, they got a pass? Did you see their pass? I hate when they do that. <clears throat> Maybe correct me before I say it. Okay. Some people are going to get a pass, which probably they didn't say it because it actually pisses me off. And then I go into resistance and then I have trouble channeling. So that's probably why. But anyway, I don't know what's going on here. The majority, can you please give me a freaking, maybe a percentage, like instead of saying something declarative, like nobody gets a pass, rah. Okay, how about 80% of the people are going to be found guilty? 70, 50, 20, just tell me a percentage. <laughs> See, when I go in resistance, I can't, I can't hear the message. It's not that they're not talking to me. It's I'm in resistance. So my, my frequency isn't matching their frequency. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Le uh, okay. I'm getting there. I'm getting back there. I'm getting back there. So 65, 75, I mean, a, a vast majority, like a, over 80%, over 80% of these people that committed a crime will be brought to a jury of their peers, whether or not they're convicted depends on the jury and you know that the court case, right? But 80% of these people are gonna be brought before a judge. Now, the problem I think would be, and I'm always trying to give you guys the real world, right? Like the real world is, is that this, this is a process. This could take three years to bring them before a judge. But in the meantime, I feel like the majority of them are gonna step down or be voted out because some of the countries that these people have sort of pledged allegiance to in the sense that they're working with these countries are not people, they're not countries the American people really want us to be subservient to. So that game over for them. So game over for them. So I'm going to end this because otherwise I could talk for another 45 minutes about this question, which I really thought was going to be quick and simple, but you know how it goes around here. If you're new here, get comfy. These things take a minute. Get some popcorn, get something to drink, get a blanket, whatever you got to do. Get a crash helmet. I mean, you know, anything can happen at this point. Okay, Patty Montgomery says that Patty is wondering about the Senate race in Arizona. Carrie Lake wants to run against Ruben Gallego. <clears throat> Gallego or Gallego? Will the D's win? Now, this one is quick. I do see the D's winning. I see them, the words they're saying is they're going to trounce her. Uh, so yes, that's a really quick answer. And I, I'm happy to hear that. It doesn't mean Carrie Lake isn't going to continue to run her mouth and to say she won. It doesn't mean she's going to go away. That's probably what we logical, practical, pragmatic people think that when somebody loses, they go away. But as we know with Trump, there's a whole new brand of Republicans that just never go away. They're like the energizer bunny of losers, right? They just never stop. So but that's what's going to happen. Gallego, I believe, is going to trounce her, is what they said. Kelly Ramsey says, in the threats to numerous state capitals, oh, excuse me, is, is the threats to numerous state capitals a coordinated threat? Number one. Number two, who is behind it, foreign or domestic? Today was another attack. It was on Arkansas. It is a coordinated attack. It's loosely, they're saying loosely coordinated. So they're trying to not make declarative statements anymore. Maybe they're trying to hedge their bets. I don't know. Uh, loosely coordinated. Meaning it's loose in, um, in the United States, meaning these people don't know each other or these people aren't so much aware. Okay, so they're correcting me while I'm talking. What in the heck? Okay, so... Some of them are aware of each other, but there's others that are not aware of each other. So I can't draw a, a link to all of them, but there are links to some of them. It just doesn't go in a full circle, number one. Number two, it is foreign and domestic. There's a domestic kingpin or a domestic leader that is organizing this. The money and the training and the weapons and the brainwashing is courtesy of a foreign country. And there are many foreign countries that want this. I mean, honestly, you know, the guides have said this many times that, you know, the United States, for better or worse, whether 
whether we want to believe it or not, we're the king of the hill. A lot of countries see us as the king of the hill. And if you're the king of the hill, everybody wants to knock you off of the hill because they want to be the king of the hill. So there are many countries that have an interest in this happening. It's not just one country, it's many countries. And in as much as I feel like there's a some sort of like um, ring, like like a, uh, what do you call that? Like a ring of robbers or bandits or bad people, like the mob or something. There's a ring of people who are the nexus of this. Then they get money from multiple countries. Okay, so it's not just one country, but it is coordinated. And I do feel like the ATF is what's coming to me and the FBI and, and even the C CIA but and the NSA. But mostly it seems like ATF, then FBI, then CIA and NSA is are the intel groups that are involved in investigating this. And, it, and what they're telling me is it won't take long for them to find this group, but the group is disseminating. They're literally leaving the country via the four winds, the four directions, you know, going north, going east, west, south. They're not staying together. They're disseminating and melting into the borders, leaving the country or melting back into society. Uh, they called them a sleeper cell. So again, they can go to sleep, pop up, do something, go to sleep. But it's important to this group that they don't, that they're not cohesive because that way one raid would get them all. So they try to stay like a satellite, you know, like spread out. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, but I do believe they're on to them and they, this is they, whereas I don't see them getting, and that, that's why they're explaining it like that. They're, they're spread out and they're melting back into their hidey holes. So it's going to be harder for us to find them. I feel like the ATF, I feel like these, some of these Intel organizations have a really good idea about who they are, but, but it's a long game. You know, they want to infiltrate, then they want to be in that group while they commit the crime. This isn't like just go catch the robber, right? This is a bigger, longer end game. And frankly, they're talking about this investigation going on through June or July. So you may find that there's another um, attack, maybe even as far away as Hawaii. Um, there, there could be more attacks on these things. It's not that it's out of control. It's that they're, they're allowing some of these groups to operate so that they can get the damaging intel, they can get enough data and evidence to really lock them up. So they're going for the kingpins. They're going, and look, that brings us right back to the international intrigue, doesn't it? And this is what I'm saying. The DOJ is like, we're done playing small ball, meaning we're done playing small. We're going all the way up. We're going to find these people wherever they are that are funding these groups. And we're going to put the kibosh on them. So that's kind of what's happening. But this could continue, especially something could be happening around May, March, May, and June and July. It's like just when you think it has stopped, it sort of pops up again. And that's what they talked about with the sleeper cell, right? They go to sleep and then they pop up. So that's kind of what I see with that. But it is, it isn't, they are on it. They do know what's going on. They are on it. They're actively engaged is what the spirit guides said. Ooh, that was a lot of energy. Okay. And um, next question is from Patricia Crossini. I'm sorry. Patricia Rossini says, are the F-16s finally coming to Ukraine? Yes, they really are coming to Ukraine. I'm getting marks that they're going to be operational in Ukraine, but it could be as soon as next month. They're, they want to be an element of surprise in this. They don't want, so like for instance, so I said March, but then they may pop them out in February or, you know what I mean? They're, that's the element of surprise. The energy suggests one thing, and there's something about the weather, about the winter weather not being particularly good for some reason. I mean, it's not that you can't do it, but it's more challenging for some reason. 
So that lulls Russia into a, a, a kind of a feeling of ease, like they're not going to do it in January or February because X, Y, Z. So they really want this element of surprise. And the guides, the spirit guides have said, air superiority, this is going to change. And I think that's your next question. This is really going to change the war. It really is going to pivot and push the energy in the right direction for the Ukraine. And then your question is, is the end of the war in sight soon, or will this misery go on for much more time? Well, it's going to go on longer than we would want it to. I've been terrible about the timing, the guides. I did three videos on Ukraine in the very beginning of this war, and everything they said has been absolutely 100% correct, except for the timing. The timing has been abysmal, wrong, completely wrong. So I'm not good with the timing with this. Right now, what, what I've started doing, if, you, if you've noticed, is I'm reading the energy under so I can understand what is the energy that's propelling the people that are in charge of the timing that have free will. And the energy under is now that I, I see this, and it's kind of connect, a little bit connected to Hamas and a little bit connected to Israel and connected to Putin, which is this kind of backdoor international deal where the United States would never ever admit to this, but they show up with some unsavory country that we don't like. And we say, you want this? We got it. We want that. You got it. Let's make a deal. And the deal is make Putin go away. The deal is make, you know, Hamas go away or whatever, whatever it is. That's the deal. So how I see the Ukraine war coming to an end is this sort of like deflation. Like it's just like a quick deflation. And that is around Putin no longer being the leader. Now, the guides have always said that. That's part of their plan. That, that's part of their videos that they've said. Putin will no longer be the leader. A military type person will take over. It might be a military, literally a soldier general, or it could be an oligarch who is working in tandem with a military person or an oligarch that's had that has military ideas. Why is that important? Well, because one of the timelines that I saw for all of this to make sense was unrest in Russia, where Russians were in the streets, didn't have things to eat, didn't have working services, water, sewer, now, I'm not talking about Russians in the hinterlands. I'm talking about Russians in the cities like St. Petersburg and Rostov-on-Don and all these cities that have very nice lifestyles. Those people lose their services. We also have that woman who's a mayor of one of those cities who's running against Putin. So you can see now that what I watch for is the timeline to come into sort of action. I see these visions. I can't know that they're going to come true because everybody has free will. So once I start seeing certain things from the vision starting to happen in 3D real time, that's how I start to have more confidence in that timeline. So the timeline of the general taking over happens to coincide with this unrest. Well, now they have unrest in Russia. Now they have this woman trying to run against Putin. I really feel like all of this could go out with a whimper, again, a deflation, not with a bang, a whimper, like anticlimactic almost, could happen this summer. I really feel like we're going to make a big, some sort of really big, and I say we, Ukraine is going to make this really big leap towards superiority in all ways, air superiority, but also just infantry fight superiority around the summer and Russia is really going to take some pretty big black eyes. I really feel like with these F-16s, Russia, uh, Russia is going to take some black eyes around their cities. They're going to get bombed. And again, that's going to get the people in the streets. These people haven't experienced any war. They don't even know a war is going on, right? So I think that's going to change everything. So that's kind of what I think. I think you're going to see a big change this summer. And I think that I'm going to hold hope for this to be over by the end of 20. Four, which is way too long. Um, and that's another reason why maybe I'm not good at timing because frankly, it pisses me off. And then I go into resistance. <laughs> so then I don't get a good read on it, right? 
Um, okay, thank you so much, Patricia. Let's move on to Pat Hansmeyer. Will insider trading on stock market from which both Democrats and Republicans have benefited ever be banned by Congress for its members? Yes, this is interesting. There's a there's a guy who who follows like Nancy Pelosi, but also Mitch McConnell and everybody else. And he follows them. So you can actually invest in what they invest. If they sell, you sell. If they buy, you buy. Which is a really interesting concept, is it not? That we could all benefit from these people just by tracking what it is they're doing. Yeah, maybe I can't afford $5,000 of this stock, but maybe I put $50 into this stock. And overall, if you're going to ride yourself to riches, I'm just going to follow you. I'm just going to bet on what you bet on. Right. So there's an e an equalization happening here. Right. Isn't that fascinating? But I do think that there's going to be more reporting requirements, more, um, you know, ethical requirements, but more reporting like I bought this stock. I sold this stock. I voted on this bill. I was a part of this meeting where we talked about maybe investigating this company or this merger, or maybe I was a part of this meeting where we all agreed that the merger would probably go through. That's insider trading, right? I mean, like I'm in a private meeting that I have privy to because of my status. And I'm pretty sure this merger is going to go through. Well, all of a sudden I'm going to buy a bunch of that stock, right? So I, I just think it's interesting that we can equalize this. We can, there's other ways that we can equalize this inequity. But yes, I do think that that is going to change. Ethics in all ways is going to be really big in 24, 25, and 26. Ethics in medicine, ethics in insurance, ethics in the Supreme Court, ethics in the court system, ethics in the prison system that's, that's profit-driven, ethics in our schools, everything. Everything is going to have an ethical magnifying glass put to it between 24, 25, 26, and even in 28. So this is going to be an ongoing energy that is not going to just be a flash in the pan and disappear. This is an energy that continues steadily throughout all those years. And, and it's messy. We're going to have to decide what is the ethical requirements. We're really going to have to get involved in our communities. I mean, we're talking about even our communities, our police, our unions, um, you know, everything, everything is going to get a scrutiny, but it requires us to be involved. If we're not part of the scrutinizers, if we don't have, if we're not, you know, what's that famous saying? If you're not sitting at the table, you're dinner. So we need to step up and get on these committees or be sure to really hound dog, bird dog, follow our senators and reps to make sure they know we're watching them. You know, we have to be more citizen, more involved. Okay. Let me move on to Matthew Howard Houston says he wants to know, will Trump have a state funeral or will he be a disgraced former president? And he goes on to say, Trump wouldn't even have Obama's portrait in the white house. Will, will his be there? That's <laughs> such a great question. Um, and then the OG Plumtree said that they logged in to say exactly the same thing. Richard Nixon's family had the good grace not to demand a state funeral for him. We know the Trump family has never demonstrated that kind of grace. It's a very true, is it not? Um, but I don't see the Trump family wanting this. The Trump family, the energy suggests they want to get away from him. They are not, once he goes down for these things, and he will, once he gets whatever is going to happen to him, right? Either he's going to be in the in the get mode that I see him in. I've always from day one seen him in this, not in the prison population, not in jail, not under house arrest, in get mode. No outside communication, no cell phone, no TV, no nothing. Literally sequestered. From the rest of the world, because we know that if he can communicate in any way, shape, or form, he will. And that's going to further destabilize our democracy. So either he's going to be there, or he's going to be crossed over. Now, the question is, 
Will he have a state funeral? I don't think so. I, I don't think he's going to have a state funeral, but I don't think it's because it, it, this is really funny, actually, and it makes perfect sense. It's not because because Biden or whoever, whatever he dies, whoever's the president, which is going to be a Democratic president. It's not that the Democratic president says, I, and I wish this wasn't true, but it's not that the Democratic president says, you're a scoundrel, you're a, a traitor, you're Benedict Arnold, you're not going to get any any state rec recognition from us. It's not because of that. It's because they want to grift from it, you guys. They want to grift from it. And I'm seeing a long time ago, Linda G saw Trump in a glass coffin at a mall. I'm telling you guys, they're going to pay, they're going to, they're going to charge admission. They're going to charge admission. And I'm embarrassed to say that I might pay five bucks to see him dead. I might. I might pay 20. I might even pay 40 once I tip the valet <laughs> to park my car. I'm not kidding. Like, I just want to see this guy dead. Okay, I'm not wishing he's dead. Don't get crazy. No, no, nobody get crying. I'm not going to go no spiritual dis detention any more than I already am. I'm saying that is a human ritual of acknowledging the deceased to look at their steely, cold, dead body and say, yeah, that MFR's dead. Yeah, I saw it. He's dead. I'm just saying, this is a this is a ritual that humans have to do. It's important that we acknowledge so that we know, yep, they really did. They did. Okay. Yep, he did. That's what I want to do. Okay, I'm going to be knocking on that glass going to see if the fish move. You know, you're going to do the aquarium, the snake, see if it moves. I'm going to be knocking on that glass, try to see if I can get a try and look and see if there's an air hose. Maybe, maybe he's in there. You know, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't put nothing past these people, but I don't see him having a state funeral. I see him having a grift funeral. <laughs> it's, it's even worse than I thought it was. To be honest with you, I didn't see that coming. Now, your next question is, did I answer both of your questions? Uh, portrait in the White House is the next question. No, I don't see him. I don't see him being, in, no, no, no. No, he's illegitimate. He's illegitimate. He's not um, He's not on the wall. I mean, I'm visually looking at the wall because I wanted to know, would they, were they just going to do like 44, 46, 47, 48? You know what I mean? Just like pretend like that number never was there. You know, are we going to do that? Are we just going to pretend like this never happened or are we going to own it? And I feel like we're going to own it. I feel like because there's a Democrat who does this, I feel like... Here's Obama's portrait. Here's literally a black piece of paper. It's a placeholder. And it says 45. It doesn't say Donald Trump. It says 45th U.S. president. It's black. And then the next one is Biden. And that, and that seems to be important because we don't want to ignore it. We don't want to sweep this under the carpet. We have to see, acknowledge understand, ingest, and integrate the problem. We need to acknowledge the problem. And, it, and it's almost like it needs to be there as a reminder. A reminder that this can happen to a free country. Okay, so that's what I see. Fascinating, interesting question. Thank you so much. It's cool to be kind, says, will Ron DeSantis ever go away and leave us alone? <laughs> It's kind of how I feel about the whole Republican Party, to be honest with you. Uh, his term doesn't end until the end of 26. What do we see for his political future? And do you think all of the book bans and the rest of his anti-woke policies will be reversed once he leaves office? Wow, you pack a punch. It's cool to be kind. Okay, so I see him leaving before 26, guys. And I'm telling you, all I can do is point to things that have happened along these lines, like Tucker Carlson being fired unceremoniously on a Friday. You know what I mean? Miracles can happen. This can happen. He can step down. They're showing me the image they always show me, and they're going back to this. There's two images that they've shown me over the last, say, year. The first image is, He's walking along and you know he's wearing his white boots. He's walking along and somebody sticks their leg out and he trips and falls down. 
And when he falls down, why this matters, I don't know, but his chin hits the dirt. It's, it's, it damages his jaw and his chin. Oh, he, you take it on the chin. He took it on the chin. That's what that means. I don't know what that means, but that's what it, that's what it means. That's that saying. He took it on the chin. I don't know what that means. Anyway, number two, I like this even better. I see him in the swamp and he's, and I've seen this so clearly. And what happens for me is that when I see something clearly, that's an indication the energy is strong. And then number two, if I see the same image or vision over the course of a month, well, that that's something, right? But over two or three or four months, well, that's pretty strong. A year, that's really strong. So if the image can withstand the test of time, that to me means it's more likely to happen. Now, this is also sort of a metaphor, I think. I mean, who knows, right? We, anything can happen in 24, I swear. But I see him in the in the swamp. He's he's bound. He's got rope. His arms are to his side, bound to his side. He's bound um, with a rope or something around his arms and then around his legs, uh, right around his thighs, his uh, calves, and his arms. He has a like, you know, a gag. He's got a gag. Um, and he's in the swamp like a tree stump. He's just planted in the water like a tree stump, okay? And he cannot move. His eyes are really big because he's in the swamp. And if you aren't not from the South or from Florida, it's not a good place to be. So his eyes, he, he, and you know what? He can't turn his head. He can't turn his head. Why can't he turn his head? Because there's a pole. Oh, he's bound to a like a big pole, like a dock post or something. And because his shoulders are bound to the pole and the pole is here, he can't really turn his head too much. I don't know why, guys. I'm just telling you what I see. So he's stuck. He's alligator food. He's snake food. He's bird food, tarantula food. I don't know what all is living in the swamp. Maybe even the swamp thing is going to eat him. I don't know. But he's in the swamp and he's immobilized. And it's interesting that Trump always said, I want to drain the swamp. I'm here to drain the swamp. It's interesting that DeSantis is, you know, a Floridian governor. It's interesting that he's in the swamp. He's detained in the swamp. Who detained him in the swamp? That's what I want to know. I never asked that question. So this is new. He did it to himself. They're telling me he did it to himself. With his policies, he he wrapped himself up in this terrible, dangerous place with his own policies. And the fact that his policies don't make any sense, they're repetitive, book banning, you know, repetitive. It, he's wrapped himself, he's, he's hemmed himself in with his own repetitive, short-sighted, policies. He's not free to go. He cannot, he cannot move away from his policies. He's doubled down on his policies, actually. He's, he's stuck. He, he's just stuck, guys. I don't see him. So the bottom line is, I don't think he's going to make it to whatever, 26. I don't think he's going to make it to 25. I think, and I've always said this too, I see him having a problem with money and washing machines. And you can put those two things together. There's uh, lots of money issues that are going to bedraggle him, that are going to dog him, that are going to slow him down and, and cause him problems. And he's going to be exposed. There's an exposure that happens. So he doesn't get out. He doesn't get away. So I think... I don't see him going to 26. He's going to get removed. He's going to be apprehended. He's going to be locked up, locked down. Yeah. So that's your next question was his anti-woke policies be reversed once he leaves. There's a person that comes in that wants to ameliorate everything, that wants to say, oh, it wasn't that bad. We're just going to change it a little bit. It was just he went a little too far. That's all that happened is he went a little too far. Let's bring it back a little bit. But reality is, is that that person is bringing it back not enough. It doesn't go anywhere near 
to the right of center. We're still way off track. And that is not going to do well. That is not going to bode well for that person. So that person has a short tenure as well. And then in and then in 26, special election. I think there's going to be a special election in 25. He's embattled in 2024. Special election in 25. He's replaced. And then a new election in 26, you guys get a whole new governor. So I think by 26, you're going to have DeSantis, the replacement governor, and a new governor. You're going to have three governors within basically two years. That's insane. But it's it's what you need because you're trying to move uh, the needle. You're trying to move people more to a center or center right position because this doesn't represent Florida. The, these positions do not represent Floridians. The guides say Floridians are embarrassed by him. By and large, of course, there's the little groups, but by and large, they're embarrassed by him. Let me just do one or two more. And Cat Funk, Cat Funk's fabulous finds. We have got some amazing names on here today. I'm going to give you guys all a hand for these names. Cat Funk's fabulous finds. And I'm going to give me one for be able to read that. Okay, your question is, will Jared Kirshner be indicted in 2024? I heard no, but I do think 2025. He may get his indicted. No, indicted, you guys, not convicted. I want to make sure I read indicted and I was asking the guides in my mind, indicted or convicted. Is he going to get indicted in 2024? Investigated. He's going to be investigated in 2024. Apparently, maybe this can change. They can always surprise and delight me with an indictment in 24. But what they're saying is indictment in 2025, jail time. Jail time. He could be in jail in 26. So indicted in 25, jail 26. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not getting justice in 24. There's a lot going on in 2024, but it's it's mayhem. It's it's just sort of go forward three steps, backward two steps, forwards five steps, backwards one step. It's just mayhem in 24. There's no, it's not a clear cut path to justice. However, in 25, boom, these other players, not Trump, but these other players are all going to get rung up, which is something they use when they mean basically indicted, convicted, that kind of thing. Your other question is, will GOP members of Congress be indicted in 2024? Yes. Let me make sure. I just heard July and August, September, something maybe in February even. That's next month. Woo. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. February, March. I feel like investigations, and this actually dovetails with exactly what the guide said. I have a whole video on timeline. This is exactly what they said a year ago. Is exactly what they said a year ago. Uh, so this makes sense. The first batch of these yahoos that would be in Congress will start being investigated. Well, they are investigated. They're already investigated, and they've already gotten target letters. Nobody's talking about it, but they've gotten target letters, which means... The government is like, hey, heads up. Hope you had a good, you know, holiday and happy new year, by the way. <laughs> you know, we're investigating you. So, but they've already gotten these target letters. They got them in December. I feel like MTG, Bobert, um, is there a Haas? Holly? Holly, maybe? Um, what's that weird dude's name? Gates, Matt Gates. Well, the usual subjects, right? They're going to be having some of them, not all of them, because because Jack Smith is, he's the bomb diggity, you guys. Because what he did was he said, well, we have the Freedom Caucus. I'm not going to send indictment, you know, target letters to all of the Freedom Caucus. What I'm going to do, and the guides are telling me that they've told me this before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to single out three of the Freedom Caucus. I'm going to send them in target letters. Because now they're going to be like, I got a target letter. I didn't. Ha, ha, ha. Right? What does that do? It, it makes me, if I got a target letter, think that that person is now turned against you and is and is witnessing against you. So it's going to cause them to go against each other, 
even though Jack Smith may be ready to send a target letter to all those people. He doesn't want to give up his hand. He wants to cause create cause chaos. He wants them to suspect each other. He wants to further cause them to be willing to call up the DOJ and say, I've got information. I want to flip. That is why only three or four target letters went out in December, maybe even two, but I think it was three. I really think it was three. Nobody's talking about it. Everybody's keeping it on down low. More target letters will go out in March. And then we're going to start seeing indictments roll in maybe as soon as March for the first target letters, April for the second target letters, May. I mean, it's just a, it's rolling thunder is what they just called it. Maybe that's even the name of this whole thing. I don't know, but it's rolling thunder. You hear a thunderclap, there's lightning. That would be Jack Smith. You hear a thunderclap, there's lightning, Jack Smith. But it's, it's meant to keep them destabilized. It's meant to make them turn on each other. So that's brilliant, I think. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Um, and I don't read these novels. I don't read these suspense spy thriller novels. So maybe I need to start reading them because that's, that's pretty interesting. Okay, I'm going to do one or two more and that's it. And then we'll do part two because some really, you guys brought it with the questions. Literally, these questions are super, super interesting. Kiki Light B says, will VP Harris come out during the campaign about herself, her accomplishments, her skills as to ease the fears of Biden's age? Yes. The thing that's interesting to me, Kiki, is that, well, actually, it's not interesting. It's actually super frustrating, is that VP Harris was everywhere. That girl was living out of a suitcase in 2023. She was everywhere. She was on college campuses. She was at businesses and industries. She was across the pond. She was in other countries. She was like Biden's secret weapon. She was everywhere. But we don't know that because the press did not cover it. She got zero press, no press at all. So we don't know. We don't know that she's been affecting you know, world trade or security or going and talking to the bright young minds at college campuses. We don't know that because nobody's covering it. She has been out there. She has been out there uh, elevating her, you know, her star, her image um, and elevating the Democrats, you know, Democratic Party's platform and elevating Biden's platform. So she's been doing that. If the media doesn't cover it, then it looks like she hasn't, but she has. And I do think going into 24, she continues to be his right hand. Like, um, I want to call her a weapon. I, I don't know that that's really the right word, but his right hand, uh, what would you call that? Something that's really helpful. Right hand man, right hand woman. She is his best lieutenant you know she she is doing everything he needs her to do she's killing it she's doing a great job she's really impressed the world leaders they find her very sharp they find her very easy to work with but they don't find her to be a doormat she has a spine and she's brilliant you cannot get one over on her she does not fall down, you know, like, uh, and I think that's um, kind of a, a different non-English translation, fall down, right? Like she, she's not knocked over easily. That's what they would say. She doesn't fall down. That sounds like something you would translate from a different language. She's going to be fine. She's, her star is ascendant. Her star is ascendant. She's going to be fine. Whether or not the media, I think the media is going to cover her better. I think the media is going to cover Biden better. They're still not going to get their due, but she is going to continue to be a valuable public asset to Biden is what they just said. Okay, great question. Marilyn Monroe says, does anyone leave political office due to the yet to be seen Epstein list? Well, I think it might be out, but... I don't see, I don't see people leaving 100% because of the Epstein list. I think the Epstein list trips investigative reporters or tips them off to things that then they 
follow and find. Let's say that you're investigating even anybody, doesn't matter. And your investigation, you've got this and you've got this, but you're missing the thing that connects them. Epstein list is the thing that connects some of these investigations that causes the investigation to go from being mothballed to active. So it's the smoking gun. It's the integral piece for a lot of investigations. In and of itself, it's not that helpful. But when you put it with all these other things, it's extremely helpful. It puts people in a place that that place has a connection to a crime. They just needed to prove that that person was there. Does that make sense? So it's very important, but in and of its own, it's not important if that makes sense. Uh, and, and I do think people will leave office. As a matter of fact, another Republican stepped down. Wasn't it an Ohio Republican? Stepped down and said, whoever it was, it was a Republican and they stepped down and they said, I'm out the end of January. I mean, they're le- they're going to like given 30 days notice and they're out. Peace out. I think that has a connection to this Epstein thing. Again, in and of itself, maybe not. But once you put that with this and this and this, all of a sudden, these other things have agency. They make sense. Again, mothballs to active investigation. So, yes, and, and that's not the first. There's going to be, I feel like this addition of the Epstein evidence is going to cause, and I don't know that this will ever be public because they're not going to admit it. (laughs) You know, they're not going to admit it. And justice takes a long time. So it might take three years to get them before a court or even two years or even 18 months. By that time, the media has already gone on, you know. So I don't think this is going to come public, but I do think at least three people that are in off that that have been office. I'm going to go back and include that one guy who just retired or stepped down. There's other people who have stepped down in the last couple of months. I think they may be implicated. So I think altogether you might see four or five people ultimately leaving because of the Epstein connection. Okay, last one. And then I will do part two. Raven... Raven Knuckles says, when women get our reproductive rights back, will that finally settle it for all time? Or will we be dealing with this in another 50 years? No, dear, this is it. This is uh, because in 50 years, forget 50 years, in five years, we're going to be well into these new astrological energies. We're going to be well into the divine feminine. In 50 years, we're going to be, God only knows what's going to happen. We're we're not going to be so separated as far as the sexes. We're going to have more melding. We're going to have more melding. So so you might see people just being more androgynous. You you just might not see these strong separations of male and female. Uh, so yeah, given that, uh, women are going to give themselves the, their rights back. And, and that this is a, it's a done deal. We're not going to go backwards. Okay. L- did I say that was the last question? Okay. I'll do one more user. Somebody, somebody, somebody says, happy new year. Happy new year. Will the windfall act ever be repealed? So people getting pensions can get their social security benefits that they worked for. So I guess what, and I don't know what the windfall act is, but by your description, I'm assuming that if you get a pension, you can't get social security. Um, what they're telling me is it, the windfall act is, is a done deal. It's that, that ship has sailed. However, a new act that will give people some social security, maybe not all of their social security. It, it could be, a, it could be, it could be based on your income. If you're, you know what I mean? that you'll get more social security or less social security, depending on how much pension you get. But yes, I see a new act where people will get more social security, even if they're getting a pension. Yeah, definitely. Okay. With that, 
Thank you so much for watching my spirit guides Q and A. My spirit guides answer your political questions. I really appreciate it. If you've watched to the end, you get gold stars. Go ahead and go into the refrigerator, the freezer, and get out that ice cream and get you a scoop of ice cream or whatever it is that you want. It's on me. No calories. Calories will be suspended. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing, liking, and most importantly, thank you for watching and commenting. Okay. I'll be back with part two really soon. Take really, really good care of yourselves. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll talk to you soon. For entertainment purposes only.